Today we're talking about how to create a Pro Tools session and how to create it properly. So if you guys are interested in learning how to do that, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, today we are continuing along with my Pro Tools series and we are talking about how to create a session. And we're talking about how to create it properly based upon the equipment that you have. That's your computer, your audio interface, etc. So as mentioned, this is part of my Pro Tools series. And in the top right corner now, I have my Pro Tools playlist popping up. Go check that out after the tutorial if you have time. It's a growing playlist full of all kinds of Pro Tools tutorials, all kinds of tips and tricks. So if you guys are interested in Pro Tools, it's definitely worth checking out. So back to creating a session. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna to go to our desktop. and We want to launch Pro Tools. So if you don't have the icon on your desktop, remember you can access all your programs in Windows by simply going down to the search bar and typing what you're looking for. So. In this tutorial, we are going to be using regular Pro Tools, not Pro Tools first. So this is the Pro Tools icon on my desktop. And as you guys can see, it has the shield on it, which means that I am running it in administrator mode. If you guys are running the regular version of Pro Tools, you definitely have to run it in administrator mode. So if you right click on this and you go down to properties and then you go over to, I believe, compatibility. Yes, yeah, so down here, as long as you have this little checkbox check that says run this program as administrator, you're going to be all good to go. So with that being said, let's launch it. All right, so when Pro Tools is done launching, you should see your dashboard right here, which is this little pop-up. So if you accidentally close this, you can always get back to it by going to File up here in the top right, and then going to Create New, and that brings it back here. So. In your dashboard, you have create recent and projects. So for create, this is where you would go to create a new session. And that's what we're going to do today. Uh, recent will show you all your uh, sessions that you recently have opened. And the projects, these are for projects you would create to share on the cloud. Because remember, with a Pro Tools description, you have some space on the cloud. Not a whole lot, <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Uh, you can buy more space on the cloud if need be, and that's going to be if you're going to collaborate with other, you know, producers, engineers, artists throughout the um, country or the world. All right, so let's go to create because that's what we're doing here. So the first thing you need to do is give your session a name. So we'll just call it test session. And then you need to decide right here where you're going to save it at. So you got local stored session here. And then next you have collaboration and cloud backup project. So the collaboration and cloud backup, this is to save it to the cloud. Local storage is to save it to your computer. And in most situations, you're likely gonna save it to your computer. So we will leave local storage session on. Now, when you're creating your first session or just a session in general, I really don't recommend using templates. There are a lot of templates in here and they do even have them based upon different genres but I think it's better just to start with a blank one because it's gonna confuse you less. So we're gonna not enable this. And then below this section here, this is probably the most important stuff when it comes to creating a session. So for your file type, I recommend doing this on Wave. Now for bit depth here, you have three different options. You have 16-bit, 24-bit, and 32-bit float. Now, never do it at 16-bit even though that's what we're going to bounce our files down to at the end, you want to record at 24-bit or 32-bit float. Now, 32-bit float is going to give you a lot more headroom, and it's going to preserve all audio signals above 0 dBFS. So pretty much render clipping is going to be a thing of the past with 32-bit float. So the only, I guess, caveat I would say is that 32-bit float files are a lot larger than 24-bit. So if you have the hard drive space, and that's not an issue to you, definitely go with 32-bit float. If not, go to 24-bit. 
Uh, you're going to have amazing quality with 24-bit, so don't fret if you have to record at that. I've been doing 24-bit most of my life. I just recently started doing it at 32-bit float lately. So that's what I'm going to select in this section. Uh, below this, I like to actually enable interleaved. So I'm going to enable that. And what that does is it makes sure that when you import, per se, a um, stereo file, that it's going to come in as an actual stereo track as opposed to individual mono tracks. Okay. Next is the sample rate. The sample rate and bit depth are the two most important items you're going to be selecting in this section. So depending on who you ask, you're probably going to get a different answer on what to set the sampling rate to. So these are some of the options in here, and these are also based upon which audio interface you have. So mine goes up to 96 kilohertz, but there's many out there that go up to 192 kilohertz. So if you don't have an extremely powerful computer, so if you're using like a laptop, uh, you're probably going to want to record your music at 44.1 and anything related to film, like if you're making a YouTube video, at 48 kilohertz. If you have a more powerful computer, you can essentially look at doubling that. So if I was recording music, I would double 44.1 to 88.2. That's where I record my next step of music at when it comes to uh, the next uh, sampling rate to choose. And then for film, it would be 96 kilohertz. So for myself, who has a very powerful computer, I honestly, I record pretty much everything at 44.1 and 48 because I'm actually going to be bouncing down everything to 44.1 at the end when it comes to music and everything to 48 when it comes to film. The truth is that the only time you really hear the benefits of the um, higher sampling rate is when you're listening in your studio, when you're actually hearing it in that sampling rate. And there's not many mediums out there today that really go above, you know, 44 1 or 48. Well, let me rephrase that. Blu-ray is like 96. So yeah, you can go up there and film. But, you know, and, you know, we're listening on the Spotify, we're listening on Apple Music, we're streaming music. Streaming is pretty much the lowest quality of music we can get. I shouldn't say that, you know, there's obviously extremely low MP3s that exist out there too, but you know, you're not going to be hearing the benefits of a higher sampling rate song when you're streaming music. And that's what everybody is listening on these days, your average listener and consumer. So keep that in mind. So you're perfectly fine doing your music at 44.1 and you're perfectly fine doing your film at 48 kilohertz. Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. <laughs> Okay, moving on. For I.O. settings, uh, I usually just go down here and do this on Stereo Mix just to be safe. And then down here is where you're actually going to save your session at. Now, if you have two hard drives, you're going to want to save your session on your secondary hard drive. That is essentially the hard drive that is not running Pro Tools, like your hard drive that is not running Windows, okay? So... If you don't, that's fine. You can put it all on one hard drive, but I'm just saying I definitely recommend getting a second hard drive for your Pro Tools projects. It's going to run a lot better for you. Okay, if you click on the location button here, it's going to launch your Windows File Manager. So now you want to pick where you want to save it. So I guess I will save this under my name here, Dan Spencer. And then when you get into the overall folder here, you could just simply do Use Current Folder, and it's going to create its own folder with the name of the session. Okay, so I'm going to use current folder here. So my location is all set up to go. Now, our last step is to simply hit the create button and that will create our Pro Tools session. So we'll let it launch now. We build our windows. This is our mix window. It is empty because we have no tracks in it and we didn't create it from a template. This is our edit window, which is also blank. So the only other thing that you need to know when it comes to creating a session is how to know if you have your audio interface selected or not, okay? So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to the setup menu at the top here, click on that. Now, the reason we didn't go to the setup menu when we were creating a session is because it is grayed out when you have the dashboard open, okay? So in this menu, we wanna go down to playback engine. And for playback engine here, this is actually your audio interface. So for me, I have a Focusrite USB interface so this is what I have selected here. 
So you're going to see some other options in here. You're probably going to see your Windows Sound Card. Uh, if you have any other third party like uh, ASIO for All or I have Voice Meter Virtual ASIO, you're going to see them in here. And as long as your computer actually sees your audio interface, like in the Windows Audio Settings, you're good to go. You're going to see it within the section. So you simply want to choose it here, then hit OK. And at this point, your session's created, you're ready to go. Now, if you don't know what to do from here, you're going to want to check out some other videos and then learn how to actually use Pro Tools. Okay? So, if you guys found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe because I'll be making this content for you. And definitely hit the notification bell to know I have new videos coming out. With that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.